Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we're going to be installing a UPnP server on OpenBSD. So the major reason you'll want to do this um, is because if you've replaced OpenBSD, um, if, if you've replaced rather your router with OpenBSD, um, you don't have UPnP most times anymore. So even if your Wi-Fi router is in something like access point mode, the the router that was doing the NAT and the firewalling in your network had UPnP on there. Um, now UPnP is not on the OpenBSD machine. So today we're going to add that. So UPnP is universal plug and play. And what that means is that it automatically opens port forwards on, in our case, on something like a router. It will automatically make port forwards, otherwise known as a destination NAT rules. So this is what um, this does in that case. It's also used on things like Plex servers and any type of media server to make configuration quicker um, and discovery. But from there, we're going to log in. And as a <coughs> root, we're going to take a look around. I have my LAN interface EM0 and my WAN. Um, it doesn't matter that these are private, the NAT works the same way, whether it's working on a public or private address. But, we're going to go ahead, we don't have anything installed except the basics. We're going to package add mini UPnPD. Okay, now that that is added, um, let's go ahead. We want to back the config file up and, and make a backup of it to dot back there. Let's remove the original. All right, so now um, we're going to remake the original file. All right, like so. And we want to go ahead and first put external um, if name in there. And this is the external interface. So in my case, it's EM1. Um, if you have multiple IPs on there for any reason, you can do external IP and then I could instead put the IP address. If you have multiple on there, anything like that. We don't have that in this case, so external if name is fine. Just make sure that's the same as your win. Now we're going to put listening IP, and then we're going to put our WAN interface. Of course, you can put the IP as well. doesn't matter. But this is your LAN, and if you have multiple, you can add multiple. And from there, um, with UPnP because it's a pretty big security risk so if you don't want that you know don't add this but uh, what can happen is clients can ask for ports to be open to devices that aren't them so malware could utilize this very easily so we don't want that to happen at least uh, so we want to do secure underscore mode equals yes just like that now there's ways around that, um, like most things. You can do ARP spoofing, things like that. So just be aware of that. So now we want to allow specific machines to access the server. We want to do allow in the port range right above the privileged ports. So starting at 1024. Then you want to put your LAN subnet. In this case, that is mine. And we're going to do... 1024 through right there. And now you want to den deny everything else, okay? So we want to deny every other port, though. This means all IPv4 addresses. So, like the other range, you want to deny everything else. So ba this is a basic configuration. That's all we really need. You don't even need the secure mode if you're not worried about that, but in my case, it's important. And again, remember, the allow portion there, you have to put your IP address, uh, your subnet that you might be using, and if you have multiple, you have to put multiple. You don't. It's not a good idea to put all addresses, all right? So with that configuration done, um, we're going to go now into etcpf.conf. Because many UPnPD has to have a place where it can put the rules in that correspond to the ports being requested, the port openings, so the port forwards. 
and it also has to be able to take those out. So in order to do this in PF, we have to place an anchor in our configuration. Anchor mini UPNPD should be the name. With anchor equals in the config file, you can change that, but we're fine with the default here. Let's save that. And at this point, it's very important to check your config file, and we're all good. We're going to flush everything, and then we're going to reload it, show your rules, and make sure anchor mini UPNPD all is present. And it is. So from here, um, if the package doesn't uh, automatically enable it on boot, you do want to do rcctl enable mini UPNPD. And let's go ahead and start it at this time. All right, it's started and uh, operating. So how do we verify that? Well, if you're on Apple or Android, you can use an app called UPNP-Scanner or like Landroid. There's many apps to use. I'm going to use a Linux uh, command line tool to do it. And we want to install um, GUPNP-Tools to do this. Just uh, real quick install that. Okay. Now the tool is gssdp-discovery and you want to specify an interface. This is commonly your LAN interface. What we should see is all of these features being advertised by our UPnB server we just made. So this 19211, remember, that's the LAN side. And that XML file is telling our UPnB client software what it supports. So if this was like a Plex Media server, the UPnP server on there would not support layer 3 forwarding because it's not a router. But in this case, we do have those features. So this tells us we can ask the server now to automatically forward ports to us. Now remember, this is a big security uh, risk. So if you want the most security, do not use UPnP. Uh, that's the best advice I can give you. Don't use it if you don't need it. But if you do, um, go ahead and use it. So let's uh, turn that off. So if we're here, just to um, show you, if you stop the service at this point, you won't be able to have anything uh, show up. That's how you know it stopped. Again, if we are to start the service, you can see that it is running on that segment. And as always, it's Tyler with T-Tech. Thank you for viewing.